So let us start our space opera off with this title, the one that started it all. It would be wrong for me to leave this off as, you know what, it's one of the reasons I started getting into video games because I'd seen like Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi and then I saw this beautiful cabinet with its glorious yoke and its silly speech sound bites that sounded a bit more like a Gungan with a head injury than Obi-Wan Kenobi or Han Solo. Uh, the assault on the Death Star is depicted in beautiful, iconic vector graphics. And though it's a short and shallow experience, it is absolutely the best Star Wars experience we could have ever hoped for back when this was made in 1983. It was an experience that you just couldn't replicate in the home, though they did try. You know, they tried like Ben Quadinaros, the uh, Tung pod race pilot who tried to win the Bonta Eve Classic. There's your first nerd reference. Now let's move on to the Return of the Jedi game. As I never played the Empire Strikes Back add-on they made for Star Wars, which depicts the Battle of Hoth, but as I've never played it, I'm not going to concentrate. Instead, I'm going to talk about Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is my favourite Star Wars movie. I know I'm supposed to say Empire Strikes Back, but stuff that. I love all the stuff about Jabba the Hutt, the Emperor, uh, the Sarlacc, uh, Riyiz. Yes, Riyiz. Uh, look at him. Look at his face. Look at his weird three eyes. Now, Return of the Jedi was a bit of a departure for Atari after their well-loved vector graphics fueled Star Wars cabinet. Instead, they went for raster graphics and took you out of the cockpit of the X-Wing and placed you above all of this like some sort of Star Wars force god. You know, like the father, the son, the daughter, or the Abeloth. Your three quarter isometric perspective highlights the dramatic Battle of Endor. First with Leia on a speeder bike escaping the bike troopers and dodging trees, like it's death chase on the spectrum or something. Uh, and then you chop to Lando and Neen Num in their quest to blow up the Death Star reactor. And you also get a bit of Chewbacca's ATST adventure um, with the Ewoks helping out in all the Endor scenes. I wonder if any of the ropes that the logs are swinging from in these sections are made from wank hide. That's wank hide. Both games replicate that Star Wars cinematic experience very well for the time. And while they're not the best games on this because they're down in number 10, I love a bit of the old school Atari arcade games, so I'm all about it, you know? However, after playing Return of the Jedi, I was incredibly surprised to find out that it was Stephen Hawking and not Lando Calrissian that led the charge on the second Death Star reactor. Just listen to him here. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 was the absolute peak of the series and the closest you could get to a cinematic Star Wars arcade style dogfighting game in the home. Rogue Squadron 3, its follow-up, was ruined by its crappy on foot sections. But the GameCube launch title Rogue Squadron 2 had none of that garbage. It had you jumping into the orange jumpsuit of either Luke Skywalker or Wedge Antilles as they took part in the many and varied battles between the Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire. There are even nods to Shadows of the Empire, as you have a mission above Kothlis, which is a Bothan colony from the book. If you're waiting for Shadows of the Empire to appear on this, sadly, you're going to be disappointed. Sorry, Dash Rendar. The control is crisp, and its real strength is in its graphics. It's a flashy, gorgeous title with a real Star Warsy feel about it. Special mention must go out to the pumping John Williams soundtrack in glorious stereo. It's just as good listening to jizz music. Perhaps, though, played on a Red Bull organ, the preferred method of jizz. Jizz, Red Bull organ. George Lucas, what are you playing at, mate? The Force Unleashed is a much maligned title, 
especially in later years. But it was a second attempt after Shadows of the Empire to wedge a little bit of lore into the original trilogy uh, chronology via a major video game across all formats. Starkiller is the secret apprentice of Darth Vader and I presume he has to hide outside when the Emperor comes round like a cheating philanderer. Starkiller, the original name of course for Luke Skywalker, would eventually come back to the light over the course of his adventure and boy was Starkiller overpowered. Anakin was the chosen one and Luke was of course our new hope, but did either of them ever bring down a Star Destroyer using just the Force? Crikey. The Force Unleashed was an interesting title with a compelling story, excellent PSYOP style force physics based gameplay and a stylish art style. The gameplay was a bit janky though and the sequel was utterly woeful and short, but I have fond memories of the first game especially as it featured a goddamn black lightsaber, one of the few parts of the game that is still canon since the Disney takeover. It's a Mandalorian thing, and we all love them these days, only if they've got Baby Yoda with them, though. Sega put out an arcade title based on the original film in 1993 after they wrestled the Star Wars arcade license off of Atari in the early 90s. The game was a pretty good Model 1 cabinet that would later be repurposed to appear on the 32X, that game playing Mega Drive Parasite, a sort of fun version of the brainworms of Geonosis. Is that too nerdy? Sometime after the 32X became one with the Force, Sega went full on original trilogy in 1998 and pumped this on rails adventure with frolics across all three movies. Episode 4 is represented by two sequences to do with the Yavin Death Star battle. Episode 5 sees you attempt to save the rebels on Hoth. Whereas the Return of the Jedi content involves you trying to stop that shield generator from working on the moon of Endor. There's a final mission involving the assault on the Death Star and a couple of first person one on one battles with Boba Vett and Darth Vader. The cabinet had a special event button which would flash when they wanted you to trigger a big cinematic cutscene and it worked really well. It's a great arcade machine and well worth putting your Imperial credits into. Sega would then, a couple of years later, give us the Pod Racer arcade game. Now, most of us agree that The Phantom Menace was a bit disappointing. Those people are generally right, but Pod Racing, though, was cool. And this is Pod Racing. Tell them again, Anakin. Now, this is Pod Racing. Easily the most Star Wars-y scene out of the prequel trilogy. The pod race was a noisy, adrenaline-pumping set piece. While the game was released on some of the home formats like the Dreamcast and the N64, the arcade version wins out as it attempted to replicate the controls operated by young Anakin Skywalker in the movie. Plus, there's that bespoke sound set up on the machine that blasts Star Wars into your ears and makes you feel like you're well, Jake Lloyd, I guess. That's good, isn't it? At least it's him in this and not in Jingle All The Way. Nobody likes you, Booster. It's an exhilarating futuristic racer that remains the closest Star Wars got to aping Wipeout or F-Zero. The Bontarif classic from the movie is of course represented, but you can also travel to the home planets of other racers such as Sebulba, the villainous attempted child killer Doug from Malister. And who wouldn't want to go to somewhere called Malastare, where people have their limbs reversed? Sounds brilliant, doesn't it? I'm sorry that this section of the list has been quite arcade heavy, except I'm not, because they're great. Now, I love a bit of immersion, 
and locking yourself into a portaloo with interactive Star Wars on a big old screen in front of you is the most exciting way to have a poo, even if the local bowling alley insists that you never return. What an experience though. By 2014, graphical fidelity and sound quality finally gave you the feeling that you were in a Star Wars movie and the ability to shut a flimsy black door firmly behind you only enhanced that experience. You excluded the rest of the world, all the noise of all the children, all the crying and suffering in the world. You were in a Star Wars movie. The same OT battles from the Sega entry are once again playable, but there's also a non-canon scenario called Vader's Revenge, where you can actually take down Han Solo. Later versions of the machine even had the Takanoda battle from The Force Awakens. There simply isn't a more cinematic feeling Star Wars game out there, even though the cabinet's a bit expensive to go on. It's way cheaper than flying out to Florida to go on that Millennium Falcon ride in Galaxy's Edge. So stick two quid in there and you'll be away. It's an absolutely thrilling game, way better than Dejaric, uh, that weird chess game, and you don't have to let the wiki win and worry about losing your arms. So play this instead.